a lot smaller than I thought it would be. All right, so this is my, oh, this is my new Tesla Model S. Um, it's a lot smaller than, uh, uh, definitely not the type of Tesla you'd think a 25 year old would be buying, but the goal here is to build the world's smallest Tesla. The plan is to basically just use the plastics from this Tesla and I'm gonna modify a go-kart to fit beneath it. We're gonna put a big electric motor in the front and we're gonna use 18650 cells for the batteries. We're gonna make 16 mini modules, so it's gonna be really cool. But yeah, before we start taking this thing apart, why don't we take it for a spin? Oh my gosh, there's no way I'm putting in this thing the way it is right now. Oh, and sit on the back. <laughs> Am I moving? <laughs> oh, All right, so I've pretty much just been going ham on this build over the past few weeks, trying to get the cart finished as quickly as possible. I feel like I'm gonna burp. I've had the camera rolling throughout most of the build, but I hadn't really been explaining myself throughout the build process. <clears throat> nice. There we go. So I figured, why don't we just jump back in time and I'll explain to you guys what I've done to get to this point. About a year ago, I was inspired by the YouTube channel Grindhard Plumbing Co. when Edwin and Ethan had put a dirt bike engine into a Barbie Mustang Power Wheels. Since watching that video, I had often thought about building something similar, only with an electric motor, rather than a gasoline engine. The plan was to convert this go-kart into a suitable chassis for the Tesla body. I started off by removing the engine and cutting off the bumpers. The next task was to actually shorten the frame so that the distance between the front and rear wheels would match that of the Tesla body. So I cut out a fair portion of the frame and then made some couplings out of one and a half inch tubing, which I then used to rejoin the two halves of the frame together. Can't get any better than that. The next step was to actually begin gutting the inside of the Tesla. I started out by cutting just enough out of the floor so that I could rest the body on top of the chassis. And from there, I'd begin to cut out more plastic as I continued on with the build. So once I had the body sitting on the frame, I could determine where I wanted to mount my motor. I knew that I wanted to mount the motor at the front of the go-kart and have the chain run through the steering column directly to the rear axle. It was kind of tricky to determine exactly where I wanted to mount the motor because I wanted the hood to be able to close all the way and at the same time, leave enough room for my feet at the front of the go-kart. After an evening of some trial and error, I ended up making this motor mount template out of wood and cardboard, which I then modeled in Fusion 360. I then got plasma cut out of quarter inch steel, cut up some supports and tacked everything into place. The go-kart originally had a one inch axle, which I was planning on shortening and reusing, but I quickly realized that the one inch axle was extremely bent, so I decided to upgrade to a one and a quarter inch axle. I cut off the original axle hangers and then welded the new ones into place. And from there, I installed the new axle along with the number 40 sprocket and chain. I also made up this mount for the new brake caliper. So I now have a hydraulic brake, which is a good upgrade from this mechanical brake that the go-kart originally had. So I was then at the point where I could continue working on the frame in order to support the body and then work on getting a seat in place. I started by bending up this new rear bumper, which goes straight up and supports the back of the body. I then bent up these tubes for the sides, which connects to these front supports. I made sure to leave enough room up here at the front to mount my controller right here by the motor. The next thing that I did to get to this point was install the seats. I just cut and notched a piece of one inch tubing to fit at my desired height across the rear bumper. I then welded on these tabs for the back of the seat to bolt onto. For the front, what I did was close off the end of a piece of tubing with some plates, drilled and tapped a hole into the top of the plate. This just keeps things looking clean and it also makes it easier for me to take the seat on and off when I need to. 
At this point, I was working full force on the Tez cart during my free evenings after work and eventually got to the point where I needed to figure out what I was going to use for batteries. A Tesla Model S battery consists of 16 modules made up of 18650 lithium ion cells. In fact, Tesla's 100 kilowatt hour battery consists of 8256 cells. I figured it would only make sense to keep this build iconic and build something similar, only on a much smaller scale. The Tezcart's battery is also going to consist of 16 modules containing 18650 cells, only it will have a total of 224 cells. So I called up my friend Tom at Battery Hookup and he was more than willing to help. So I'm currently on my way to Battery Hookup to build the battery packs for the Tesla. So we're essentially making 16 modules that are going to be 14S1P using uh, Samsung 13L, which are power cells. They can do 18 amps continuous. We need a bunch of power output in a really small space. We're basically assembling a module just like this. So it'll make a nice brick. And then this is all going to connect into a main distribution block in parallel. All the cells are the same voltage and they're just ready to go. Assembling the battery packs was easier said than done and ended up being an extremely time consuming task. Each module is to have its own 30 amp BMS and wiring those was the main reason why this took so long. Luckily, I had plenty of help from Tom and my new friends Ron and Matt, but even with the assembly line we had going, we didn't quite get the packs finished while I was there. All right, so I'm back from battery hookup and I didn't quite get all the battery modules done while I was there. Got a bunch of them completed, but just got a few more to finish up here and then uh, can hopefully get them into the go-kart. I've got all of this foam cut out, which I'm just taping onto the top and bottom of each battery pack. And then I am wrapping it with some heat shrink. The final modules will look like this. Got 14 more to go. Let's get this done. Once the batteries were finished, I made some enclosures out of half inch HDPE. And from that point on, I basically just had to make the chain tensioner, the chain guard, and then wire everything up. Let's just say I was beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So today's a pretty exciting day. Last night I spent the evening stripping down the go-kart to prepare it for painting and that's the plan today. I want to paint the entire chassis and then tomorrow put everything back together and then the next day finally take this thing for a test drive. So hopefully everything goes as planned and we can get the go-kart on the road in a couple of days. What do you think Tanner? Hey, what do you think? Give me your paw. <laughs> So I decided to go with the thumb throttle because I literally have like no room for my foot in the front right side of the car. In fact, with the steering wheel in place, I can't even get myself to fit inside. And to get around that, I added this connector for the throttle and the steering wheel has a quick disconnect. So this gives me just enough space to get in and out. So as you can see, I have just enough room for my legs. On the dashboard, I have my voltage and current meter, as well as a switch for the headlights. And in the middle, I have my control box, which has the key switch and forward and reverse controls. Honestly, if the car was any smaller, I don't think I would have been able to fit. 
So for those of you who are interested, the motor is a Moat Energy ME0907 brushless DC motor, which has a continuous current rating of 100 amps and can peak at 220 amps for one minute. And the controller is a Kelly controller, model KLS7240D. I'll place some product links in the video description. Anyways, now it's finally time to take this thing for a rip. Holy cow, sorry I lost control. No, that's okay, I thought you were aiming for me. Should I do a donut? Yeah. So what are my final thoughts on the Tezcart? Overall, I would say it's probably the coolest, but at the same time, the most ridiculous thing that I've built. The only problem that I'm having is sometimes when I'm driving, the front wheels tend to slightly lift off the ground, and that's because I'm sitting right above the rear axle. I could fix this by moving the seat forward, but I obviously don't have room for that. So I think the only solution in this case would be to add some more weight to the front of the cart. But other than that, I don't think there's anything else that I'd change. It's super fun to drive, it handles great, and I learned some new skills along the way. I'm just happy I was able to get myself to fit in the cart. If there's anything else you want me to do with the Tez cart, let me know in the comments section below. In the meantime, I'm currently working on a 72 volt pack, so if you're curious to see how fast this thing goes on 72 volts, stay tuned. I also want to thank my sponsor, Battery Hookup, for supplying me with all the batteries in the BMS units. If you're in need of batteries and you want the best price possible, check out Battery Hookup and use code AustiWawa for 10% off your entire order. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. I just have to follow that because you don't know who you